Hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Got a special video. I want to do a review on the new Bafang M625. This is a lot of people have been asking about this one. It's the one that uses the integrated battery, uses special proprietary communication device. So you can't just use any off the shelf battery with this. Um, so let's check it out. I'll give you my thoughts on it. I've finally had a chance to install one. I'm trying to get down low. So yeah, let's get right into it. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I build bikes, custom e-bikes professionally. Um, I take a normal bike like this, this is a Costco North Rock fat bike, and I outfit them with motors and batteries. Um, today I was uh, given this motor kit by De, De Ruiz. Um, they are a motor supply company. They wanted me to do a review on their motor. Um, so I said, yeah, it's awesome. Let's do it. I'll, I'll do a review for it. So check the link. Check the link below um, if you'd like a link to this motor. You could buy it from their store. Let's get right into it. So this is the new Bafang. Everybody keeps asking, hey, are the BBS O2 is the BBS HD going to go away? There's no plans on that for the future. Everybody's speculating for the last couple of years, ever since this thing came out, that the O2 and the HD was going to go away. The O2 and HD are awesome motors, by the way. Um, the biggest claim to fame is that they're able to be programmed. So you could change out every parameter on that motor with a free program. You just need a $15 program cable, essentially. Not so much with this motor. So let's find out whether or not that's going to be a deal breaker for some, or maybe it's just not that big of a deal for some. Really, when it comes down to it, it's the, you're either in one camp or another. Some people really they buy the Bafang because they really want to be able to fine tune their motors, how it behaves, every single parameter. Some people just don't really care. They just, they like the performance that the mid drives give. And if you're in the latter camp, this, this kit will probably be for you. The motor uh, is made by Bafang and so is the battery. And this is a giant battery. It's a 52 volt, 19.2 amp hour battery. So it's over a thousand watt hours, I believe. I think it's slightly over a thousand watt hours. So this is a massive battery. So massive, in fact, that it would not fit inside this frame. This is a medium-sized frame. I think it's an 18-inch. And this frame is not the biggest. So that's definitely something to consider, is that these, these batteries are massive. They're like six inches tall, which, you know, that's you need a big frame. You're not going to be putting this on any small frames. And a lot of medium frames you won't either. You'll need to put it on a large frame and a hardtail at the least. No full suspensions for this one. But if your bike does accept it, it won't be a problem. It's very, it's got the uh, shark style mounting tray, so it's very universal to mount, gives you plenty of options. It's just like this bike was way too small, the frame, so it wouldn't fit. But you can see it's got two different serial ports. One is for the data and one is just for the power. So it needs to communicate. So I think it's the CAN bus uh, protocol that they use. So you can't just use any battery off the, off the shelf to do, at least for, just yet until we find a hack around it. Um, I really hope that they come out with a smaller battery pack, like a slim one, maybe one that comes like right to here, half the size. If they could get a really small, slim one, that would be great. Um, these do use the 21700 cells. So, I mean, I think 19.2 amp hours is kind of overkill for most people. So I would really like to see one that's half the size and half the range, that'd be fine. Nobody needs like a 70 mile range. Some people do, but most people can be fine with a 20 mile range. So I'd like to see them come out with a small one. Otherwise you have to put it on a rear rack like we did for here. Um, this is a 100 millimeter bottom bracket. I don't believe that they have 120, which also may be a problem for other people. If they want to do like a true fat, like the fat fats, they need a 120 millimeter uh, bottom bracket with. This is 100. They do come in 68 or 73 to go on standard bottom size brackets. One thing that I did notice with this is that it has native outputs for a tail light and a headlight. This cable was not long enough though to reach <laughs> this tail light which is kind of a bummer. So we just left it off. But, you know, it's a two pin connector. You could get an extension cable. I just didn't have any on, on hand. But that is nice that they come with a headlight and tail light native, made by Bafang in-house. You don't have to go third party. So that's definitely nice. The other thing that's different with this design is they built in essentially a built in tor torque arm. So a lot of people complain that their motors work loose over time. This one is nice because it comes with this loop. Aesthetically, yeah, it's gonna probably draw some ire of some people that 
they don't like having this hose clamp on here and obviously this is not tightened down i wanted to show you how it goes but you essentially just put the hose clamp on here it comes included with it put it around a little piece of shrink wrap shrink tubing and tighten it down and then this it's not going to go anywhere it's nice and tight it'll never work itself loose um, the new chain ring i don't like the one that it comes with it has zero offset so it really bumps the chain line out Good news is though, is these chain lines are the same as the BBS HD. So you could use a Leckie uh, BBS HD chain, chain ring and bring that chain line back in. So it's not a huge, it's not a huge deal. It just sucks that the one that it comes with stock is not great. Pretty quiet. I just did a review on the um, Astro bike. You can see I'm wearing the same shirt in that video. And that, that motor is very loud. It's a hub motor. And that one was very loud compared to this. I rode this one right after it. And I was like, this thing is dead quiet. I heard the, the tires I heard way more than this. I don't even think I heard this motor at all. It's a very quiet motor. And they did use, I think it's like magnesium. They changed up the design of it, uh, the materials that go into it. Yeah, so it, it's an it's a upgrade in motor and it, it's very torquey. It's very strong, just as strong as the HD, but I think it's a little bit quieter, which that's nice. There is no gear shift sensor output on the bottom of here, which is strange which you know, most O2s and HDs come with that, depending on who you buy from. The, the majority of the O2s and HDs come with the gear shift sensor out of it. I'm a big believer in having gear shift sensors on it. So what I did is I put one in and I just used a splitter off of the brake cutoffs. Um, so it comes with the standard Bafang brake levers and I just put a splitter on that and then put it into the gear shift sensor. So there's a workaround. It's not that you can't have it, but you do have to do one little step. You know, and the splitters, they're cheap. They're like 10 or 15 bucks or something, but it is one more step that you have to do and then figure out how to wire that in. Um, but I have a gear shift sensor now on this motor. So that's one thing that I got a lot of people saying, oh, you can't have a gear shift sensor. And I was like, I know, I was like, that sucks, but you can put one on. I put one on here and it does work. All right, let's move up to the display. I like this display, it's a very good display. It shows you a lot of information. It shows you your trip, it shows your odometer, it shows you your max speed, your average speed, your estimated range left based on how you've been riding. It does show you your battery voltage underneath that. And there's two different ride modes. You can put it either economy or sport mode. I didn't really notice a difference between switching those two. Maybe if I put on like a couple thousand miles, I would notice it. There's five different pedal assist levels. It's non-changeable. You can't pro change it to three or nine. I like to have nine, but you can't change it. The display is nice and big. I think that I think a lot of people are gonna like it. It's definitely nice. And then if you go into the display, you press and hold the plus and minus together. It gives you all the different settings you could change like on a standard Bafang, which is nice. Change the wheel size, power view, whether you wanna see the voltage or the percentage, things like that. Pretty much standard, set your speed limit. The one thing that I do like about this is the battery information page. And it'll actually tell you each series of bat uh, battery cells what their current voltage is and then you can kind of see if one is off you know that you got a bad you know bad bank of cells but it also shows you like like how much capacity is left on the battery right now it really goes in depth in detail about what is going on with your battery and i think it's because of this you know this it, some people it's a hindrance but it does show you a lot more information like you could really get in depth on the state of what's going on with the battery which is cool I really like that. So they are making a lot of advancements on one page and then some, some things that are coming back, some things are backwards on the other one, like not including a gear shift sensor natively. Not really being able to change the performance on this. You know, you can't really dial in. Pedal Assist 1, for my liking, was a little bit more powerful than I would have liked, but you know, you could always just stop pedaling if, you, if it's getting too much. But you know, for me, I like to dial that in and show, all right, I want Pedal Assist 1 to stop at like, six miles an hour for example where this i was pedaling up to about 12 and i was like all right i'd like to just go about five and just pedal softly and do five but this kind of ramps you up and there's no real way to stop that that i could tell throttle is nice it's very um you could go really really slow on it and it you know the one thing that the is the big look at that there's a lot of gradation between zero and a hundred the stock BBSO2 and HD motors, it's like almost like an on-off switch, the stock 
throttle. This one's very nice. It's very, it, it, there's a lot of attenuation between there. So that's really good. It does come with the battery so you could uh, remove it, lock it. So yeah, let me show you the performance on it. You'll see it's just, it's standard. It's like the same as the BBS HD motor. Couldn't really tell too much of a difference. I'll do a hill climb and a top speed test on this, but obviously this is not a super ideal gear ratio. It's like 28 to 44 or something. So it's like, this is not geared favorably for hill climbing, but let's show, let's show you what it does. So you can see it squeaked up the hill. It got up there, but if you change this out for a smaller one or change the rear out for a bigger one, it, this thing will fly up any hills. Um, top speed was, I think, 28 miles an hour, just on throttle. But yeah, overall, this is the performance is gonna be, I would say, just like, just like an HD. And having the, the lights is nice. Having a giant battery, having it all under one, made under one manufacturer is nice. You know you're gonna get really good quality. At least I would think that the failure rates on these are gonna be 0.1 to 0.5%, um, which is really nice. Um, again, just I hope they come out with a smaller one, and I hope they come out with a way to like kind of, to nuance the motor a little bit, to change it, to personalize it a little bit. Um, but again, if it's not, if that's not important for you, this is a great motor. I think it's a, I think it's a better motor than the HD. It feels quieter. It feels, I don't know. It looks nicer. It just, it, it's, I think they, they've done a good job for the most part with this. My big, my big grievances though are just the programmability. So if that's important to you, you might want to not, you might want to stay away from this, but if it's not, and you have a place to put this, Go for it, it's a great motor. All right, hope you guys found this helpful. If you guys need help uh, building your own custom e-bike, if you have questions about this, go to johnnynerdout.com, book a consultation. I'd be happy to talk to you about your build, to help you save some money and time along the way. So, all right, have a good one, guys, thanks.